Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hi there everyone. Today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite shows ever, The X-Files. This is one of my favorite shows of its genre, almost any genre. I think it's that good. I feel this is one of those shows that I, I guess, feel like that I found, rather than a show you grow up on that becomes part of your childhood. The X-Files was started in 93, being probably 22 years old, 23 years old. It was a perfect time and place for me to find the show. Coming off of the influence of Twin Peaks, which I love that show, by the way. The X-Files, created by Chris Carter, and I think you should give some credit to Rob Bowman, who directed and produced. He blended a lot of the genres he loved and created this show that is groundbreaking, in my opinion. Uh, I think you could look on Wikipedia and you'll see he's influenced by the Twilight Zone, Tales from the Dark Side, Twin Peaks. Uh, Mulder, who's played by David Duchovny, was actually on Twin Peaks. You have Gillian Anderson, who plays Scully. There's been a host of stars and guests on the show, directors. It's just a awesome show all the way around. It had 11 seasons. Although you could say the first seven were focused on Scull Scully and Mulder, and then other seasons were, you know, they shifted the focus where other actors were doing things, or they put to the forefront a couple of new FBI agents, let's say. And I actually liked that departure. I'm also a fan of the movies. I think they were very well done. I think... It spawned two spin-offs. I think it's Millennium and The Lone Gunman. It's got numerous awards and nominations. This was my show for the age I was at. I followed it till its end. Even the revival, which happened not too long ago. I think the last season ended 2018. I think it was like 10 episodes. And so was the previous season. So you bring something back, you're always nervous, and for me it worked. I even liked the movies that were in between the seasons. And the second movie, I want to believe, is a small, quiet story. And it fascinates me, and I recommend both those movies. I read the books, even the fan fiction. I mean, this is 93 it started. I put this up there with my favorite shows. I'll probably do a podcast on Buffy. Because that was a, another show that, for its genre, I think is uh, one of the best. You look at the longevity of the show, the quality of the seasons. I can't even see people who say, oh, I don't like the show, it sucked. I think they would tell, you know, I don't like the show, but, you know, it seems to uh, have a good audience and it has some critical acclaim, although... That's not always the criteria. But I think you people would respect the show for what it did. Uh, some groundbreaking episodes. and They took real life conspiracies and things that happened in our culture and our history. Blended it into these characters and created their own mythos. You have some amazing characters and actors and actresses that have come on the show. The characters who stick with the um, mythos for a long time, because not everybody survives, obviously. Um, they took Robert Patrick, who was John Doggett, Monica Reyes, Annabelle Gish, and made them the forefront um, protagonist. And I think Scully was pregnant for the second time. I'm not even sure. So they, and I enjoyed those that season or that season and a half to two seasons. 
I thought it was a fresh take, a good way to transfer the baton, and that's hard to do. But you kept the core foundation of X Files. It was still there. You still had Mitch Pileggi and uh, the Smoking Man, and just a host of characters. They knew how to give everybody the right amount of time, the plots, the atmosphere. And they've always been honest with giving the credit to, like I said, past shows. You've got uh, uh, Twin Peaks and Tales from the Dark Side. Kolchak, which I did a podcast on, is one of their favorite ones to mention. You have merchandise and, like I said, books, video games. Top quality on every front. Compelling. I get into it. The chemistry is there. Granted, if you're not into this genre, yeah, okay. I could see people not in, you know, giving it a shot or enjoying it. But it's so um, deep at times, so emotional. It can get dark and be humorous. And for a show that has to do 22 episodes a season, that spawned two movies and two spinoffs, I think it deserves to be up there as one of the greatest shows. I mean, just the culture change, it seemed, for me, because I could see other people had, uh, what do they call them, uh, water coolers moments, you know, shows you go and you talk about them. Well, for me, The X-Files was that show. I mean, that's where my mind is. That's where my interests are. Uh, this show fit me perfectly. And you add top acting, directing, cinematography, music, mood, atmosphere. I mean, who doesn't love conspiracy theories? Except when you're arguing with idiots online. I recommend this show without a doubt, 100%. Quality, yes, you might argue and debate some shows, but I don't think you can say, oh, season three sucked or season six sucked. I could see where it didn't go the way you wanted it to, and you might be uh, disappointed in them. That's fine, right? It's all subjective. And you look at Chris Carter's dedication to the show, his um, trust with Rob Bowman, what they've gone through, the actors and actresses. I've watched the panels. They go on. You can see the genuine love and concern they have for each other. Um, And I think there even might be a real romantic um, connection at times in the past. I can't say enough about the show. It might have a dated feel, I guess. It doesn't bother me, but I could see that being a criticism, maybe. You know, it is set in an era, but I think things are... Like, some shows can do it well when you look back, and even though you might notice the phones are different, or if there was even phones, or beepers, and cars. I mean, some people, that does catch their eye. But I think this was so well done, I don't think it matters. I think this is a show... 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years later, it'll be recognized for the uh, high quality, the talent, or what it did for the culture. There's so many references. You got the opening theme, which is classic, and everybody recognizes it. It's a rare thing when a show like this comes along. So much fun. Anger, tears, uh, shock, suspense, it has it all. There are so many awards the show has won. There's even, um, not, you know, you don't have the main actors and actresses. Uh, they all look like they put 100% into the show. Even your guest of the week or your monster of the week type um, episodes, they were um, unique. They... It worked, and always in the background, you had this moving plot, and you were always waiting and for that episode that would hook you, and you know that everything from before that was the Monster of the Week was kind of included in this. It's all part of this game and plan. 
Now, the execution of this I thought was great, if not something you agree with. So, at certain points it was, well, no, everything is, all these conspiracies are real. And at one point it's, no, all the conspiracies are conspiracies to fool you. They're not real. And his confusion on it and his outlook, his worldview, uh, well, I say he, so that's uh, Mulder and even hers, Scully's, the changing the um, shifting of uh, responsibilities in the show and the changing of minds, uh, being convinced one way or another. It's just done amazingly. You have so many actors that have been on the show. Lou Diamond Phillips, Bruce Campbell. I mean, I guess you can keep going on and on. Even actors who didn't have a huge presence. It seemed like they would come on the show and shine. It would just be um, a rare moment. And you don't see that in many shows. And I think that's what makes sometimes a great show. Either the directors or the casting. Everything's working so well. You do, because for a good bulk of the show, it's Monster of the Week, or you think it is. And you've got characters and reoccurring characters that are sometimes minor, sometimes major. And they're always hooking you and getting you interested in a deeper lore. It's just great. I bet I could find out how many exact awards it won and be a better podcaster, I guess. I just... Love turning on the mic and just getting excited and talking about the shows. And I've watched, like, I think uh, the first three seasons again before I did this. Not right before, but over the course of time. And what you can do in a busy life as much as I can. Um, and I watched the movies also. Just an amazing show. Give it a try. Um, if you heard good things about it, it's probably true. If you heard bad things, well, I find it hard to find faults that could shift my my view on the show to a point. So I could see criticisms. Uh, I would call it nitpicks. Yeah, I mean, I'm gushing so much over the show, I'm maybe glossing over things. But I don't think any of those are justified to say, oh, the show was shit or the show was not worth it. Give X-Files a shot. I know it's a big, long mythos. And if you want to delve into the books and all the other and ancillary uh, connections, it's a really great read, great plot, mythos, story, executed on all fronts very well. Watch the X-Files, everybody. Wish you the best. Until next time.